when I was sick, I'm still sick to a degree, but I'm doing much better. Thank you for your well wishes, condolences, and concerns. I really appreciate that. What I am trying to do today is cast an observation on some things that I've seen. There's um, a gentleman by the name of David Carroll, or there was a gentleman by the name of David Carroll, who has been on YouTube a long, long time. And I've listened to some of his commentary and he and I have similar talking points about similar things. But I am a social critic on the economy. I am not a social critic on black people. If I was to become a social critic on black people, I would just create a new channel. But it is interesting because in my opinion, this man put out some brilliant content and more than likely I am going to steal the ticking clock. I thought that was pretty dope. But let's talk about David Carroll. This is a man who came to the Internet and he dropped his wisdom, insights and opinions about certain things. That's all he did. This man was hated. <laughs> and recently, uh, last year, it came out that he had passed on. And uh, that's something that's very much a part of all of us. At some point, we're all going to die. And, um, you know, just to fill you guys in, when I was sick, I never thought I was going to die. I just got really sick. I had a bad cold. I've had worse colds. I never thought I was going to die. But I did know that if I disappeared from YouTube for a prolonged period of time, that some people would be concerned. And that's why I made the video stating what was going on with me, where I was, and what was happening. Mr. Carroll did not actually have that opportunity. I've never spoken to Mr. Carroll. I've never had any words with Mr. Carroll. I don't even know much from a personal standpoint about Mr. Carroll. I know about his commentary. I know about his attitude. I know about his cigar smoking. I know about his love of the Pittsburgh Steelers and if the NFL team we both share. But I don't really know David Carroll, the man. I just know of him from his body of work. And I'm amazed at how many people were happy that this man died. Let's just go ahead and reverse it. David A. Carroll was a man that came to the Internet and he spoke his social commentary as a social critic. That's all he did. <clears throat> he did not kill anyone. He did not hurt anyone. He didn't kill baby seals. He just spoke what he felt was his truth here on YouTube. And there was something else called the rabbit hole. Um, I've not been able to locate where the rabbit hole was. And like I said, David A. Carroll has been on YouTube a long, long time, a long, long time. And I have a feeling that one of his main earlier channels, this is something that's happened to Mr. Lucario several times. Mr. Lucario has gone through three or four channels and that's part of cancel culture. And I feel, once again, this man is just speaking his truth. He's not putting hands on anyone. He's not talking down anyone. He's just speaking his truth. And going to my video, Five Reasons Black People Don't Have Money, that is in a similar vein into some of his talking points. Because like I said, we have similar talking points on similar subjects, but I do not cover the full array of topics and subjects that he does or he did like 
I know that I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I don't care if you marry a black man or black woman. There's a lot of people, a lot of hand gashing. Statistically, 99% of black men marry black women. But when it is a black man of wealth, it's like the end of the world because he's going to marry this white woman and when he dies, his wealth will go to the white people. If you took all of the NFL players, all of the NBA players, all of the major league baseball players, all of the soccer players, you took all of the actors and rappers, we might have 15,000 men. Maybe. Maybe. And if we're just going to go with black men, we would definitely have less than 15,000 men. This is not enough men to fill up a section in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So why are people concerned about a handful of men while ignoring the vast, broad majority of men who do marry black women? I'm about to tell you. First of all, there's something that is called entitlement. People feel entitlement. I mentioned her before. She was a mother of six, seven children, and she was on the news, and she's like, somebody needs to take care of these children. Somebody. See, when you have an entitlement mindset, you feel that someone should come save you. Someone should be there for you. Um, it is very, very interesting. But once again, that is one of Mr. Carroll's talking points about the divestment group. And this is a group of black women who profess to never marry black men or deal with black men. And they will only deal with white men. And I believe Mr. Carroll, correct me if I'm wrong, but he had a challenge to the divestment group that if he would show, if they would show them living a normal and ordinary life with their white husbands, kissing under the mistletoe, living a life, he would just take all his channels down and go away. Not one of them ever did it. I'm about to tell you something. I have a friend who's white. That's with a black woman. Now, let me go ahead and paint a picture for you. My friend is 6'3", maybe 240, really good shape. His wife is 5'3", maybe 115 pounds. She kind of looks a little like Dandy Newton. This woman has never worn a weave. She's extremely feminine, soft-spoken, and very kind. That is the type of black women that successful, handsome white men will go for. Essentially, they will go for the cream of the crop. They're not going to go for some loud mouth, messy harlot. They're, they're just not going to do that. And I've seen this over and over and over again. Because this is some, one of the things, and I'm not going to even go into it anymore outside this video is this is one of the reasons that I tell black men to be the best version of themselves because when you become the best version of yourself you open yourselves up to getting the best women regardless of race regardless of she's black regardless of she's Asian regardless of Reginald Lewis Black man got him an Asian woman before it became cool. Now, why did Reginald Lewis get able to snare himself an Asian woman? Because he was the best of the best of the best of the best, sir. He was a remarkable man. And this is what happens to remarkable men. And I'm about to go way back in time. This boxer. 
and I believe his name is Jim Johnson. Um, this boxer, years and years ago, he was knocking out white men. Jack Johnson, Google the white slavery law that brought down Jack Johnson is still in effect. Jack Johnson was a big, bold, bald-headed black man that was knocking white men out left and right and fucking white women. Let me say that again. Jack Johnson... And this was in 1912. Now, the point here isn't that Jack Johnson was fucking white women. That's not the point. The point is when you become an, an exceptional man, you get to do things that non-exceptional men cannot do. That's the point. Don't get lost in the weeds on this. Understand. And this is one of the biggest issues that I have with disruptive male. Everybody wants the kinky, naughty stuff, but nobody wants to do the work to become an exceptional man. That's the problem that I have over there. Because when you become exceptional, you don't have to worry about dating these wildebeest or these hobbits. Because you will be in the purview of exceptional women because you're an exceptional man. Now, that's where I'm at with that. Like, I don't really care who you sleep with. I don't care who you date. I really don't. But I do care about you being successful. And this is one of the things that we have to tip our hat to Mr. Carroll. Mr. Carroll was successful in cultivating an audience in and cultivating a fan base, building a following. And there were many, many, many people in the comments who were very, very sad at his passing. That's an exceptional man. That's exceptional man work. See, here's the thing that drags down so many people. So many people want to remain ordinary, but want the results of the exceptional, want the benefits and the perks of the exceptional. I'm going to say something that may come as a surprise. But if you are a black male YouTuber that cultivates any size of an audience, you are successful. You are successful. You're doing the work of exceptional men. And I believe, and I'm just spitballing here, that if Mr. Carroll was still alive, and he and I sat down and had a nice steak dinner. I just kind of have the feeling that he's a steak and potatoes man. We would have a great conversation. We would have a wonderful conversation. Because like I said, I'm not on all of his talking points. But I'm on some of them. And I feel his social critique is 100% valid. I really do. And this is one of the big issues that we will have, because uh, honestly, I'm thinking about starting a black social critique channel. Like I won't do any other videos like this uh, on this channel. I just did it because, you know, I've been sick. I've been putting up a lot of old videos and I was like, you know what? It's time to get back to creating new and fresh content. And that's what I'm going to start doing. And I thought this would be a great way to break the ice. Because when I was looking back through my old catalog of stuff, 
I realized I haven't done any podcast type videos in the longest of times. I'm talking eight, nine, ten years. I'm sitting there like, so we're bringing those back. We're bringing back a lot of stuff. So as I heal up and get a little bit better, I'm going to do more. But I felt that this was the time to do because there, there's there's a number of black men who have been providing social credit commentary on YouTube for years. And th this is something that puzzles me. And I'm about to make an extremely bold statement. The YouTube algorithm is racist because it is created by white men, Indian engineers, and Asian men. And whatever inherent biases that these men have, they embed it in the algorithm. And I'm going to tell you why. David Carroll should have been at 500,000 subscribers easily. And I'm about to go way back. There was a guy on YouTube. Yeah, man. Street Money 21, who was one of the first financial YouTube channels. A young brother, good looking brother, drove the 5 Series Mercedes, had a good job and was investing in stocks. And he talked about that. His channel really didn't go anywhere. It really, he should have blown up because literally, and this is the thing, and this is why I say the YouTube algorithm is racist. Street Money 21 should have blew up. He was legitimately successful. He was making money. He was talking stocks. His channel, I, I tried to search for him. I can't find his channel. I don't know if he took it down. You, you, you need more proof? Da Vinci. Da Vinci was the brother that started pushing Bitcoin long before it became what we know it to be today. And he was like, listen to me. Just buy yourself a little bit and hold on to it. Trust me. That's what he said 12 years ago. His channel, even when he kind of came back and he started talking about Bitcoin, never took off. But you can have a white YouTube creator who can be broke as all get out and come up and start a YouTube financial channel and literally blow up overnight. So we have consistently seen educated, smart, successful black men start YouTube channels and they go nowhere. And we have seen the incompetent the incapable Andre Jack Andre Jack had no money when he started his YouTube channel none now he has I don't know uh, last time I looked at a million subscribers he could have two or three million subscribers now I don't know and I consistently see this and this is something that I see with the David Carroll's the people who should be having larger social media followings they just simply don't because i felt that if the youtube like i said this this you cannot change my mind on this because i've been doing youtube since 2009 i have seen youtube channels come and go i have seen people blow up i have seen people crash and one thing has remained consistent talented exceptional Black people who are outside hip hop, music, sports, or family channels just typically don't do well. They just typically don't do well. They just don't. And like I said, you know, Mr. Carroll will be missed. And like I said, I don't know the man, never met him, never talked to him. But I do feel that if we sat down and had a nice steak dinner, it would have been a great conversation. It would have been a good conversation. And this is something else that I thought about, too. Like I said, I was just sick. I wasn't worried about dying. Now, I will 
share something with you that when I had my heart attack, and I remember this with great clarity, I was in the emergency room, I was in the trauma room, and I could see people around me and they were working on me. And then I remember a nurse saying, just relax. And I was looking at her and the next thing I knew, the room went black. And I did not wake up again for about four or five days later. At that moment, in those fleeting moments of consciousness, I thought I was dying. I couldn't breathe. They had a tube down my throat. I couldn't talk. So I have a feeling of what death feels like. And it's cold and it's lonely. Now, I didn't see any lights and I didn't visit anyone and I didn't, I didn't see I didn't see none of that. All I know is it just went completely black. And then a few days later, I woke up. Then I started to get better. But. We can take the lesson of David Carroll, whoever you are. You need to do whatever you want to do. You need to do whatever you want to do to make yourself relevant. Because like I've, you know, I, I haven't Googled all of them, but there are people who were very sad that Mr. Carroll passed. And there were people who were extremely happy that he had passed. And I want you to think what kind of sick degenerate person are you to be happy that someone you don't know that someone that has never done anything to you has died that's something I will never understand so this is the first of many coming changes hopefully you enjoyed it let me know your thoughts and opinions in the link below in the comment section below and I will speak to you guys in the future.